Okay, let me continue with uh, uh, bearing capacity aspect of shallow foundation and in the previous lecture I have just shown that if the same footing is placed on different soil uh, generally uh, uh, even though if we uh, apply through uh, center uh, pressure distribution below the footing will be little different when it is a uh, clay type of soil, then edge pressure is more and uh, center pressure towards the center is less and when it is a sand, generally edge pressure is less and at the center it is more. And uh, some of the, uh, it, it not only depends on the footing uh, soil type, it also depends on footing type and sometimes it is a large footing, flexible footing uh, placed on any soil. Generally, uh, settlement will be in the middle will be more and at the edge will be less, but surprisingly generally uh, pressure below the footing will be uniform. And whatever may be these, these are all some understanding how uh, the pressure varies below the footing, but we generally consider when the footing is uh, load is applied to the center of the footing, then we assume generally the footing pressure is average pressure that is equal to load by area. And finally, uh, uh, load by area and then we uh, by applying bearing capacity theories, we find out the ultimate bearing capacity, the net bearing capacity, the net ultimate, net allowable and finally, allowable bearing capacity. And then uh, in a particular footing suppose there is some amount of load and footing size is known, then I can find out what would be the average contact pressure and in no ways average contact pressure because of the loading should in, should be uh, should greater than the allowable bearing capacity or what other way we can say that that pressure because of loading should be much smaller than the allowable bearing capacity of the footing. So, this is the thing we have to do in fact by this way uh, when you find out when you first determine without knowing the footing size, we generally in terms of some width and all we find out the ultimate bearing capacity, then net ultimate, the net allowable, then allowable and if the allowable bearing capacity is given for a particular site, then what you have to do because of the loading condition and you have to find out the size of the footing. So, that is the uh, keeping the pressure below the footing lower than the allowable bearing pressure. So, that is the thing we, in the design concept we generally we have to use. But, uh, 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 as I have mentioned that uh, sometime in some condition the footing load may not be through the center of the footing and that may cause actually uh, moment in the footing in addition to the vertical load. And this moment loading and vertical loading when together uh, acting then what will happen below the footing will never be the average pressure, there will be variation in pressure and how because of the eccentricity of the footing, how pressure below the footing varies uh, uh, and, and based on the eccentricity of the, uh, of the loading that I will show you in the next slide. Uh, let us see, you can see this, uh, if this is the width of the footing, if this is the width of the footing, this is the width of the footing and you can see suppose loading was somewhere here, loading was somewhere here and then uh, I can imagine uh, at the center there is a the same load in addition to this, this load multiplied by this eccentric distance as a moment. So, I, 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 I can modify this one to in this form. So, initially suppose this thing was not there, only this loading was there and this loading can be visualized as equivalent to a loading at the center and in a mode moment. So, that means I can assume that eccentrically loaded footing is uh, idealized like this a moment in the a moment at the uh, around the axis and a vertical load through the center. And depending upon the value of E and E can E can see you can see E less than this I will come later on when E less than B by 6 then pressure distribution below the footing will be like this, one side will be pressure will be high, one side pressure will be less and in between it will be linear variation. And if the E exactly equal to B by 6, 
then your one side contact pressure becomes 0 and one side contact pressure is quite large. And if your E become greater than V by 6, then you can see one side pressure become quite large and other side actually it become tension actually it will become uh, it is it is upward and this side will be downward. And downward that, that means, the between the soil and foundation there is a tension and generally soil cannot take tension there will be separation will take place this situation should not be arise generally. So, you have to make sure that this type of situation will not occur. So, that has to that actually in the design process you have to make sure that and if it happens then we ignore generally this portion and we consider only this portion is loaded and area of this and the loading has to be equated in such a way and accordingly you have to find out what should be the maximum value of pressure or load can be applied. So, that I will come later on. So, that means, uh, because of the eccentricity of the loading the pressure distribution below the footing will be different uh, it will not be uniform throughout the length when it is E eccentricity is less than B by 6 the 1 sixth of the width then one side will be maximum one side will be minimum and there will be linear variation between this and when E exactly equal to B by 6 1 sixth of the width of the footing then one side will be high value one side will be 0 and in between linear distribution and when E become B by 6 it will become 0 pressure at some uh, uh, location of the footing beyond that this will be tension and tension should be ignored because we uh, soil cannot take any tension. And so, that point to be taken as 0 and this point to be taken as maximum value and in between is a linear variation. This, these are the uh, different types of pressure distribution below the footing is uh, below the footing can be visualized because of the eccentricity of the loading. And you can see now whatever I have shown uh, actually you can see that uh, uh, you can see footing width can be divided into three part b by 3, b by 3, b by 3 and this is the centered and exactly b by 6, b by 6 this is that means half of this. So, that is called one third rule. So, that means the footing uh, eccentric can be maximum can be this much or this much. So, that means so, from here that means eccentricity maximum eccentricity can be B by 6. So, that means B by 3 multiplied by half. So, that means that you, you have to apply the load if this is the footing if this is the footing either you can apply here, 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 here like that to make pressure 0 because below the footing we generally do not accept the uh, tension. So, if I if you are loading anywhere uh, in this zone your one side will be 0 other side will be maximum when you cross this boundary when the loading comes here then what will happen there will be this side there will be tension and this side will be too much of compressive load. So, that is the range actually B by 3 B by 3 if you can divide into 3 parts and so eccentricity should be within this zone that is what. So, B by 6 that means maximum B by 6 since one third is B by 3. So, within this zone to be applied load to be applied and maximum eccentricity will be B by 6 because with respect to centroid. And if it is uh, uh, if you can keep uh, in general uh, uh, within this zone as I have shown in the previous figure the generalized pressure distribution is Q minimum here and Q maximum here uh, and with any value of E in between uh, this zone. Now, uh, uh, you can see here uh, as I have shown uh, there if this is the footing and this is the centroid load is applied here and this can be considered as a loading and one moment and suppose uh, your 
this is L and this is suppose B. So, uh, uh, you can see now uh, because of this uh, loading the two loading one because of this compressive load that suppose P this is suppose P and this is suppose M which equal to P multiplied by E if this distance is E and this is P. So, because of this uh, so Q at, at this point at this point Q will be because of this P first. So, P because of the P what will be the loading below this at this point uh, because of this loading P when it is set, passing through the center it will be throughout the leg it will be P by L by B and uh, if I consider at this point since the moment direction is this then this when I consider this side it will be negative pressure and when I will consider at this point it will be positive pressure. So, because of that I can write the general plus minus. Suppose I want to find out at this point then it will be minus and or if I want to find out here this will be plus then what will be the. So, the moment is acting with respect to this axis and bending moment theory can be applied here you know that your stress sigma will be equal to m y by i and m is known and y is here how much it will be b by 2. So, it will be ultimately m multiplied by b by 2 divided by i and since the footing is rotating with respect to this axis then you have to find out i y that i y this one. So, i y will become this become then base and this become height. So, this will be uh, L uh, B cube divided by 12. So, general equation is M y by i by i x and so, uh, so if I simplified if I simplify this for this equation if I simplify this equation then I can uh, uh, write once again uh, this will this will become um, m 6 m uh, 6 m by L b square this become 6 m by L b square and uh, this is again can be written as 6 multiplied by P multiplied by E by L B square and so P by L B if I take P by L B if I take out. So, first component was P by L B plus M Y Y by I X this will be I Y of course. Uh, so, uh, so this is P L B M Y by I B and m y m y uh, into y by i x or, or i y uh, this is modified to 6 p l by l b square. So, p by l b if I take out from here p by l b if I take out. So, it has come out here and then it, it from p by l b if I take this become 1 and this become plus minus and you can see p is taken out l b square. So, it will be 6 times e divided by b will be left over. So, that is why. So, this equation if I modify accordingly then your equation when you will use minus sign that become minimum q because uh, uh, when the, because of this direction of moment uh, this side become moment because of moment pressure is negative and because of moment pressure is positive here. So, at this point there will be compressive pressure because of P. So, it is P by L B minus actually because of that M Y M Y into Y by uh, I, I X uh, I Y um, this is uh, sorry this is actually M X because moment with respect to this axis no this is uh, M Y this is uh, moment with respect to y axis. So, this will be m y this is correct m y 
and this distance also y and when I am considering this uh, moment with respect to this axis this is i y that is correct. So, so this is the way if I modify so it become p by l v 1 minus 6 e by b and this side pressure will be maximum p by l v 1 plus 6 e by b. So, this is the uh, maximum and minimum pressure when this loading is applied eccentrically. Now, we can see that as I have told you that uh, uh, it can be 0 also when, uh, when E equal to uh, 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 B by 6 that can be another condition can be modified, but when your footing is uh, E is greater than B by 6. Uh, so, so, this side the tension this side pressure is tension so to be ignored and to stable the footing. So, what you have to do? You have to imagine that centroid of this pressure and centroid of this footing should be same. So, to do that you can see here this is the eccentricity and this must be uh, b dash by 3 because the centroid of this triangle the centroid of this triangle will be here. So, this must be b dash by 3 this is b dash by 3 and so b dash by 3 plus e uh, b dash by 3 plus e must be equal to b by 2 and and in, in that case and uh, total p whatever applied load must be equal to the area of this triangle that will half l half into l into b dash. And so, ultimately the equating this you can find out maximum q will be equal to 2 p by 3 l into this. So, you have to while in the design stage that q should be allowed this much and this should be compared with the allowable bearing capacity of the footing. Now, uh, already I have mentioned uh, before that when uh, one way eccentricity and this uh, uh, L become L dash and B become B dash and uh, so L dash how it will be L dash become L dash equal to L minus 2 uh, E y and B dash will be L minus 2 e, uh, sorry B minus 2 E x. So, this is the way we can change and then based on that uh, we can find out uh, bearing capacities from uh, for a q equal to c n c plus q n q plus half gamma b dash n gamma uh, based on that you can find out the uh, bearing capacity and finally, to find out the load maximum load in the footing we can do q multiplied by b dash multiplied by l dash. So, this is the way uh, uh, can be solved uh, this problem. That means, uh, how to uh, find out the carrying load carrying capacity of the footing when either one way uh, 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 when it is a one way then you, you have to uh, same way uh, this is actually when two way eccentricity two way eccentricity and when it is one way same bearing capacity equation, but your load capacity q will be equal to q multiplied by uh, b dash multiplied by l. So, this way you can find out this is one way eccentricity. So, this is uh, this is the way one can uh, find out uh, the loading in the footing, but if it is uh, this is the simplest way, but in addition to that uh, similar to the one way eccentricity for two way eccentricity also we can do this way when uh, instead of uh, load acting here or here if it is here it is one way eccentricity if it is here one way eccentricity, but the loading acting here that is two way eccentricity. So, the two way eccentricity in that case generalized equation for q will be something like this. Uh, first of all uh, when the loading is applied here 
then with around this axis there is a moment like this because of this eccentricity and uh, because of this moment uh, because of this moment along this moment around this and uh, when the loading is acting here like this then what happen uh, your uh, this side will be positive and this side is negative. So, like that and uh, so uh, uh, depending our load is either here or here I can use a generalized plus minus sign. So, because of because of this compression so when the load is here I can consider imagine the load is here with a moment here and another moment with respect to x axis that is another moment m x. So, so first of all I suppose consider because of this uh, m y uh, or because of m x suppose uh, moment on the x axis. So, because of the m x uh, m x when I will consider m x uh, multiplied by uh, Uh, m x will be m x multiplied by uh, it should be uh, this distance will be y actually. So, this must be y and uh, and this will be i x m x when this moment with respect to x m x this is uh, this is m x and then this distance is y and and with respect to moment with this uh, second moment of area with respect to this axis that is i x. So, m x into y by i x and similarly when the loading is here then there will be moment with respect to y axis. So, this is m y same and when the m y I am considering that pressure at this point and this point it side is plus this side minus. So, I can use generalized sign plus minus and when I will take uh, uh, so, when I will take from here, so this distance become x. So, this is corrected, this should be x actually. So, this will be m x and, uh, and this will be uh, i y actually with respect to this uh, axis when I moment. So, this will be i y. So, uh, so so, that means, three components will be there when the moment uh, our load is acting uh, both way eccentric then it will you can imagine the load one central load and two couple one couple with respect to x axis another couple with respect to y axis and so because of the vertical load this is the pressure pressure and because of the location of the uh, uh, loading it can be plus or minus. So, I have used so because of the moment around x axis what is the pressure I have added and because of the moment around y axis what is the pressure I have added. So, these three component will be there and m x will be m x will be equal to p multiplied by e y p multiplied by e y and m y will be p multiplied by e x and then finally, similar to the one way eccentricity I can find out by expressing the i x and i y in terms of the l and b and maximum value of x and y by expressing in terms of half the length or half the width and simplify then q minimum reduces to a expression b by p by b l 1 minus 6 e x by l minus 6 e y by b and so q maximum when it will be plus. So, uh, you can see i x when I will uh, use this one let me uh, show this one how it coming how it is coming m x actually your uh, uh, this part I will just do m x is actually your p multiplied by uh, e y and this uh, y become uh, your uh, y become Uh, y here y is here uh, this is on l. So, this is actually because uh, I, I have used so far b here, but it is l. So, it, it, it will be uh, so that means, this should be b. So, this should be b by 2 and here actually when I will take moment with respect to this axis that means, rotating with respect. So, this become. 
So, this becomes L B Q by 12. So, this has to be simplified you can see uh, uh, this become so this become 6 p uh, e y by l b square and you can see that p by l b if I take out p by l b if you take out then you can see 6 e y it become so p and uh, so it become p by L b if I take out then it becomes 6 times u i and below b will be there. So, you can see second term this term 6 u i by b it is coming for uh, this one for this actually the for this it is coming this and for this it is coming this one. So, that means uh, this i x i y is second moment of area when the uh, moment is taking place with respect to this with uh, respect to this axis then I have to take uh, this i x i x that means when rotation with respect to x axis it will be uh, l b cube l b cube by 12 and when uh, rotation with respect to y axis that means uh, uh, with respect to this y axis that means i y that will be equal to b l cube by 12. So, accordingly if I substitute in this expression and uh, then your q minimum become this and q maximum become this. So, so ultimately uh, you can find out uh, because of the position of this uh, 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 loading point uh, you can find out different corner what is the maximum pressure minimum pressure and that has to be equated to the allowable bearing capacity if it is exceeds the allowable bearing capacity of that then it has to be modified. So, that is one part. Second part is that if I this q minimum and q maximum if I equate to 0 then you can see that I will get an equation of a line of where e x and u i is the variable. Okay. So, if I equate to 0 this if I equate to 0 is equate to 0 then 1 minus 6 e by l minus 6 e y by b become a equation of a line. So, I will go to the next slide and you can see. So, this may be the this may be the equation of one line one side this is one line one line this may be another line this may be another line this may be another line. So, that means, if your loading vary point of application of the loading vary within this zone is not going beyond this if it is within this zone then the contact pressure below the footing will be always positive and if it goes out of this then contact pressure may become uh, tension actually. So, to maintain positive pressure within the footing base what you have to do you have to apply the load within this zone and this zone is called kern that is actually it is called kern. K E R N curl. So, that means within this area one has to apply the load. So, that the what is the distance actually? If this is B and this is A, so this should be so this is B better I will write as L. So, this will be L by 3 and this is B by 3. So, that means this will be B by 6 maximum, this is B by 6, this side L by 6, L by 6, that is the whatever we have seen before. Similar thing only there will be trapezoidal area will get central. Uh, before actually what we have got uh, we have got a zone because footing was uh, we have assumed in two dimension. So, we have got a zone similarly uh, we have got this is zone when I am considering similarly when I consider with respect to this this is the zone. So, when we do two zone then I will get a trapezoidal area this is the rhombus actually in fact. So, that will L by 6 from here L by 6 from here similarly B by 6 from here B by 6 from here if I join them then we will get a card that actually that means the area within which if you apply the load then pressure with below the footing will be always positive. So, and that has to be maintained generally for our design. So, with this uh, I will stop here thank you.